guys, this is Judy from Patterns for Pirates, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the sizing of the runabout romper and dress. I'm going to be talking about the adult pattern this video. I will also have a youth one if you want to click around for that one. Overall, the runabout is a looser, slouchier fit. Let's talk about some really important measurements to follow and the ones that you can fudge a little bit on this one. An important measurement is your upper bust on this pattern. It's got a loose, wide, low neckline. This is the scoop neckline. And it also has an off-the-shoulder neckline. Both of these, it's really important to pick your overbust size. If you have a smaller overbust and you just go ahead and go with the larger one, you're going to find your neckline falling off your shoulders or the off-the-shoulder falling further than you want it. So make sure if you have a smaller overbust to pick from that. Um, the dolman option has a lot of extra ease at the bust, so you can actually usually get away with not doing a full bust as well. If you do cheat and you use your smaller overbust measurement, measurement without doing a full bust, you might need slightly more length in your bodice for your bigger bust. Um, that's something to keep in mind. The tank top option is something that you're not going to be able to cheat mm -hmm. on. The tank top option is very, is more fitted at the bust, so you're going to need to do a full bust adjustment on that one if you have a smaller over bust to full bust on the measurement chart. All right, let's talk about the bottoms. The bottoms, the joggers are the tightest, so they have zero to little ease depending on where you fall in the size range at the full hip. There is some ease through the thigh and knee. It gets fitted again at the calf, and then, of course, the cuff at the bottom has some negative ease. So if your hip falls into a larger size, I do recommend grading up for the joggers. The shorts, however, are much looser. They are a more of a straight cut down. The thighs especially are loose and flowy. Um, so if you're used to grading up for your thighs, you might be able to skip that on this one. If you have really small thighs for your size, you might consider grading down. Or another trick you could do is just take the inseam from the shorts and put it on the jogger bottoms, which have much more narrow thighs, if you're looking for that look. Let's talk about the skirt option. The skirt option does have a little bit of ease, but not much. So I'm wearing the skirt option here. It has a few inches of ease, not very much for a gathered skirt. So if your hip falls into a larger size, I do recommend grading up for your hip size. If your hip size is smaller, you can really get by with not grading. Since there's so little ease already, it's not going to drown you if you have a smaller hip size. Alright, let's go to waist. On all options, you can really get away with not grading for your waist, whether it falls into a smaller size or a larger size. So what you can do is do your other straight sizes from your chest and your hip and then you can just grab the elastic that coordinates with your waist. So I have a medium bust and a medium hip. I do not grade for the waist. I do not grade it down to a small. I just grab the small elastic and throw it in there. Now mine will be slightly more gathered than a straight medium but it, it will still look great. Same with if your waist is a bigger size. If you're a medium and a medium and a large waist, I don't recommend grading. I just recommend grabbing the large elastic and throwing it in there. Um, let's talk about length. This is one that can be a little bit trickier on a one piece or a romper. So we put in the total trunk length. How to measure your total trunk length is you start from one shoulder, go down through your legs and up the back. You want to pull it taut. You don't want it going around all of your curves that you have. If you do that, it's going to be much longer than what your actual trunk length is. So you want to pull it taut around that. One thing to keep in mind is taking your total trunk length can be a little bit tricky. The other measurements you want to take into consideration are your total height, your side waist, which is your armpit. It's not all the way up into your armpit but where your shirt was, your bottom of your armpit. So not the top of your armpit, but the bottom of your armpit down to your waist. Another one to take is your waist to your full hip. Now, 
you want to look at all of these as a big picture. Your total height, your total trunk, your side waist, your hip, and your inseam. All of these will give you a big picture of where you have your length if you have extra length or less length than the average 5'5". I am 5'10", so that's 5 inches taller than the average. So I have 5 inches from the floor to my feet added somewhere, right? My total trunk is 4 inches longer than the average for my size. So that's two on the front and two in the back. I need two extra inches from my shoulder to my full hip. I am split evenly. I have an inch above my waist and an inch below my waist. I know this because my side waist is one inch longer and my waist hip is one inch longer. Then my inseam carries most of the rest of the extra height that I have. So that's one inch. Two inch, I have about two inches longer mm -hmm. to the floor, that's four inches, then I have about an extra inch from my shoulder up. So pretty proportional here. Um, you want to make sure that your measurements make sense as a total just like that. If you take your chunk length and it's eight inches longer, but you're not even, that would be four inches on the front and the back, but you're not even four inches taller than the average something went awry, right? That measurement probably wasn't super accurate. So make sure that your side waist, your waist to hip, your total trunk, your total height are all adding up to a cohesive, realistic picture of where your length is and is not. Okay, I hope that helps. There's one more thing I'm gonna talk about and that is where the waist should hit you. This romper is meant to hit at your natural waist, so where you bend to the side, it is just below your ribs. It's not where you traditionally wear your pants, and it's not your belly button. Um, it's actually above your belly button and below your ribs. So here's my ribs, here's my belly button, and my waistband sits right in between my belly button and the bottom of my ribs. So if you're having trouble with the length, you want to make sure that it's right under your ribs and that should give you enough blouse it should give you um, the correct rise unless you're taller or shorter so I hope that helps with you picking a size and um, knowing if you need to add or take away length and where exactly you need to add or take away that length from I can't wait to see yours and I hope you have fun sewing up your runabout